My guess is that at some point in your Christian life, you've wondered who you really should be praying to. Should we be praying to God the Father, Jesus, the Holy Spirit? I've had those questions too. Maybe you even said, does it even matter who I pray to? Well, (laughs) I've had that question too. And I want to address some things to consider as I answer that question. Today, we're going to uncover the truth. Who should you pray to? God the Father? the Son, or the Holy Spirit. Hey, welcome to my channel. I'm Pastor Joshua Putnam. I'm so glad that you jumped in on this video. And before I go anywhere, I just kind of want to say this. I don't want to make prayer seem too complicated that you get discouraged and, and don't pray. But I do also want us to pray correctly. I want us to pray the way the Bible would intend us or teaches us to pray, there's a lot of power. There's great power in prayer. And sometimes I think we miss some of that power simply because we're praying the way we think we should instead of looking at what the Bible says about prayer. As we jump into this and try to answer this question, I I want to just say this, that each person of the Godhead is just that. They're a, they're a person. They're, they're not a thing. They're, they're, uh, they're, able to communicate with us, and we communicate with them. This is, uh, as we pray, and we want to communicate with them, and we communicate with them according to the specific roles that they have in the Trinity, as in if you're going to, uh, if you're going to address, if you're going to praise God for his Uh, for your forgiveness, well, then that would be God the Father. It's God the Father. The Bible says he qualified us. He forgave us. He's the one that does that. But if we're going to be thankful for uh, the death, we could thank God for his giving up his son, but Jesus is the one who died, and he could be praised for that. When we are thinking about maybe a, a guide or somebody who guides us or a comforter, that's the Holy Spirit, and we pray to the Holy Spirit for guidance and, and for comfort, and we pray to the Holy Spirit for conviction of sin. We can pray to each of those, and, and that's okay. But the Bible does really give us a pattern. Uh, and that's the pattern I want to look at today. We're going to look at all three in the Trinity today. And then as we do that, I just kind of want to break those down. And then we're going to pull it all back together at the end with kind of a simple answer here. But we need to go to Scripture. i got a bunch of verses for you today. So, so just kind of hang on a- as we work through this. So the first person in the Trinity that we are going to answer, should I pray to God the Father? Well, I think that's kind of an easy one, because when the disciples asked Jesus how to pray, what did he say? He said in Matthew 6, 9, pray then like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. This is what Jesus taught us to do. Jesus taught us to pray to the Father. And if that's what Jesus taught us to do, then that's what we should be doing. We should be praying to to the Father. The pattern that we're going to look at here in Scripture is that really uh, the intent, the majority of our prayers should probably be addressed to the Father. Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. God the Father is the intent there. We need to pray and let our, our requests be known to him. If we look again at the G, at, at Jesus' words in John 16, 23, it says, in that day you will ask nothing of me. Truly I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Jesus says, ask in my name, but ask the Father. So we go to the Father in in the name of Jesus. And that kind of begins to transition us to the next uh, area, the next person of the Trinity, because there's this problem that we often overlook as Christians. I think we get so comfortable in prayer that we forget who we really are. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means we've all failed God's standard, that we're, we're imperfect, and God cannot look on sinfulness. He cannot look on that imperfection. We have no right to come to him because of that imperfection and that sin. Ephesians says we're aliens and strangers, we're outsiders. Our sin 
causes us to not be able to come to God and have that relationship with him. Yet in Hebrews 4.16, we read this, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We have no way of our own self to come confidently into the presence of God. But this is where we are now introduced to another person of the Trinity. And and let me just say this, as we pray, we are praying with this intimate uh, connection or this intimate relationship with all three persons in the Trinity. And that's what I really want us to see today as you're praying. And it's going to help you know better how to pray and give you more confidence in prayer. So now we we see Jesus. Jesus is the go-between. He's the mediator. He sits at the right hand of the Father, and he's going to the Father on our behalf. And not only is he going to the Father on our behalf, but because of Jesus, we can come boldly to the throne of grace. Look at 2 Corinthians 5, 21. It says, for our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We are righteous. We have the ability to come into the presence of God boldly only because of the righteousness that Jesus has given us. And that's why Jesus says, pray in my name, ask in my name. We walk boldly into the presence of the king of the universe because we have righteousness, not that we have brought on ourselves, but the righteousness that Jesus has given us. So we have the right to pray to God because of Jesus. So we pray in his name. We go boldly in his name. So we pray to God the Father. We do it through the ability that Jesus Christ has given us. But now we also look at our shortcomings as a human. How do we even pray? How do we know what to pray for? Or why would we pray? When do we pray? Well, the Holy Spirit helps us with all of that. When we are praying, number one, we should be praying in the Holy Spirit. Just as we are taught to walk in the Spirit, as we are walking in the Spirit, we understand that we are praying in the Spirit. The Spirit is the one that compels us to pray. Have you ever just been kind of walking through your day and you feel this intense burden that you just need to spend some time praying about something or for something? Or even as you get up in the morning and it's a part of your regular pattern of prayer, it's the Holy Spirit that continues to remind us and and convict us and push us towards prayer. The Spirit compels us to pray. Not only does the Spirit compel us to pray, but it helps us in our foolishness. Man, we pray uh, according to what we think we want, right? We pray according to what we think is best. And sometimes we do it out of kind of our own short-sighted selfishness, but other times we're praying that way because it's the best we know. Or how about this? How many times have you been in a situation where you knew you needed to pray, but you were so crushed, you were so heartbroken, you felt so guilty, whatever the whatever the situation was, you had no words. Well, the Holy Spirit helps us pray. Paul tells us in Romans 8, 26, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So the great thing about this verse is it kind of answers our question. Should we be praying to God the Father? Should we be praying to Jesus? Should we be praying to the Holy Spirit? There are people who would argue, because of some of the passages that we've looked at, that we should only pray to God the Father. Well, what if they're right? If they're right, this verse, it gives us the answer and it gives me the freedom. If I pray to Jesus and I shouldn't be, well, the Holy Spirit is going to the Holy Spirit is going to take that and he's he's going to make that prayer acceptable to God. He knows my heart better than I know my heart and he knows the heart of God and he takes our prayers and he he takes them to God. He prays in our behalf to in ways that are even too deep for words. We can't even often touch when we start thinking about prayer. We cannot touch what prayer really is, but the Holy Spirit as we pray in the spirit he he helps us and he goes on our behalf. So the what what I want you to get out of this is we need to pray correctly, 
But just pray and let the Holy Spirit sort it out. Some days we just need to pray. We just need to let our, our utterances or we could say our blubber out to God, right? We're just, we just don't even know what to say. We don't know how to say it. Maybe you're angry at God or you're, you're just broken so much you don't even have words and you just, you just groan and you just let it out. And the Holy Spirit takes that on our behalf. He helps us pray. So let's put all of this together. And, and understand what's happening here. As we pray, again, we're participating in this amazing fellowship with the Trinity. We cannot pray without this fellowship. We cannot pray without praying to the Father uh, because of and through Jesus with the help of the Holy Spirit. It cannot happen. We can't do that on our own. And we should recognize that as we pray, the gloriousness that God gave us. He says, he, he tells us to pray. He commands us to pray, but he also gives us every piece we need to be able to pray. And we we use all of the Trinity. They, they are a part of what is happening here. And, and we need to understand that. So here's really uh, the easiest way to say this, that, that yes, I believe that it's okay to pray to, to different um, personalities in the Godhead in the Trinity. However, the pattern most often is that we would pray to God the Father, and we do that because of the righteousness that Jesus has given us. So we pray to God the Father through the Son, only because of him. And even in that, we have no ability to fully understand how to pray or what to pray for. Therefore, the Holy Spirit that indwelt us when we are saved, the Holy Spirit, we pray in the Spirit who helps us. So all three are a part of our prayers. So if that's the case, let's not make it too hard. Let's just worship God, offer him our prayers, have a conversation with him, and Man, let's get after it, and let's see the power of prayer become a part of our lives. Thanks for watching. I hope this encouraged you. I, I hope you learned something today. I'm sure many of you have asked this question. If you're brand new to my channel, please make sure that you subscribe and hit the little bell. I try to upload videos every Thursday, so I don't want you to miss any of those. Uh, if you were encouraged or challenged by this, hopefully this was an encouraging video to you. So if you were encouraged, please hit the like button. And I always say this, sharing is caring. So if you were encouraged by this video, somebody else probably will be too. So make sure you share it. That'll help other people find my channel. And just by doing that, you can help out this ministry. Please do that. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.